This is another episode of Flat Earth Falsities. This time we're going to look at Rob Skiba's fuzzy ball logic and the eye level horizon. In this continuing series, I will debunk the claims of flat earthers. Let's take a quick look inside the brain of a flat earther to see what we are dealing with. Uh oh. Look at the condition of your mind. Antiquated ideas. Bungling. False concepts, superstitions, confusion. To think straight, we'll have to clean house. Sorry, I couldn't resist. In this episode, we are going to look at a video from the seemingly endless source of scientific confusion that is Rob Skiba's YouTube channel. In his video called How Pythagoras and Aristophanes Gave Us the Flat Earth Trump Card, he displays some fuzzy logic when it comes to understanding how a sphere works, confuses concepts, omits critical math, disregards the scale of the Earth, and even misconstrues my own Horizon video. But he actually starts out with some correct analysis. If PJ was six feet tall and he had a clone, who's also six feet tall, right, who walked one mile away from him, the ground his clone would be standing on would be eight inches lower than the ground that he was standing on, right? Again, the curvature math is eight inches per mile squared. So the first mile, one times one is one times eight is eight inches. So the ground from point A to point B, point B is going to be eight inches below point A. Right, you with me so far? Now, if the clone had a clone who walked another mile away, that clone's ground would be 32 inches below PJ's ground. Why? Because it's 8 inches per mile squared. 2 miles, okay, 2 times 2 is 4, times 8 is 32. So the ground that clone number 2 is standing on is 32, almost 3 feet below the ground that PJ is standing on. And if we had yet another clone who was to walk one more mile, his ground would be 72 inches or 6 feet below PJ's. Thus, the top of clone number three's head would be even with the bottom of PJ's feet. Now, I'm not trying to see whether or not the person can see the other person. What I'm trying to show you is the issue of the ground level. The ground level is the issue that I'm focused on with this example. Skiba actually got everything right in this clip. And I don't get to say that very often about Flat Earthers videos. He even used the correct calculation the correct way. The 8 inches per mile squared calculation does measure the drop from the horizontal position of the viewer as he described. It's not 100% accurate, but it works as a close approximation for distances under about 100 miles. Flat earthers, though, often misuse this calculation to determine how much of an object will be hidden by the horizon. As I have said before, it is the wrong calc to use for that. It actually measures the drop from an imaginary horizontal line extended out from the viewer's feet, as you can see in the chart that Skiba himself shows. Because of this, this measurement is not really useful for anything. When we look at the Earth, we care about where the surface is, not where the horizontal is. But, as I said, his analysis is correct so far. But here, is where Skiba makes his first error, and it's a big one. Because if clone number three's ground is 72 inches below the ground that PJ's standing on, it's going to be physically impossible for PJ to look straight ahead or to the left or the right or behind him and ever expect to see the horizon at his eye level. It can not be done. Yes, the horizon will be below eye level, but by how much? He leaves out this critical component. Skiba forgot to ask by how much does the horizon drop below eye level. He never even attempts to calculate it or even approximate it in any way, yet it is critically important. Since now he is talking about viewing the horizon at a distance, the number of inches of drop is just not enough information. You need to combine the number of inches of drop with the distance to determine the viewing angle. What is the angle? By how many degrees do you have to tilt your head down to see the horizon? 
From this point on, I will call this the horizon dip angle. Well, this is actually pretty easy to calculate, but Skiba neglected to even mention it. In his example, we have a six-foot man looking out at the horizon three miles away. The horizon has dropped by 72 inches from the horizontal, as Skiba correctly pointed out. So this forms a triangle. A very, very, very skinny triangle. Too skinny to portray adequately in an illustration. If I drew it to the correct scale, it would just look like a line, not a triangle. This side is 72 inches for the height of the viewer, plus 72 inches of drop below his feet, for a total of 144 inches. And this side is 3 miles, which is 190,080 inches. I gave it in inches to illustrate just how skinny of a triangle it is. And from this information, we can calculate the horizon dip angle using simple trigonometry. I've shown the calculation on the screen in case you want to check it. But you can also calculate it at metabunk.org slash curve, just by plugging in the height and distance. The answer comes out to 0 0.043 degrees. That's right, it's only 4% of 1 degree. That is a very tiny angle. Another way to think about this is to imagine how small 12 feet is when viewed from 3 miles away. Well, we don't have to imagine it, we can check it. The Empire State Building, seen here from the Freedom Tower, is just under 3 miles away, and each floor is 12 feet high. So in this picture, you can see how small 12 feet is from that distance. From the top of each window to the top of the window above it is 12 feet. And that is about how much the horizon has dropped over that distance. A tiny amount to the naked eye. Do you really think that you are going to notice that tiny of a drop from the horizontal just by looking at it? No, of course not. It's just so small, it is undetectable to the naked eye. And it would take a very accurate measuring device, such as a theatolite, to measure such a tiny angle down from the horizontal. Skiba is right that the horizon will always be below eye level, but the amount is very, very tiny, especially at the low heights we ordinarily experience. Sometimes in science, our intuition alone is not good enough. It doesn't seem like the angle would be that tiny, but it is. Every time Skiba says, looking down, think of the critical number he leaves out. You're looking down by 4% of 1 degree. He also said that the size doesn't matter, but of course it does. Now I realize that he is saying that no matter the size of the ball, the ground does immediately begin to drop away, and that is true. But the size of the ball affects how fast it drops away, and that is critically important. The horizon does drop no matter how big the ball is, but the bigger the ball, the smaller the drop. If we look at his beach ball example, we can see that he shows a very steep angle down to the horizon. To be fair, he never represented this as a reasonable scale, and of course it isn't. But let's see what happens if we make the ball bigger. The bigger the ball gets, the smaller the down angle gets. The earth is extraordinarily big, and therefore the horizon dip angle is extraordinarily small. Too small to notice with a naked eye, and too small to even adequately illustrate. Size matters. That's why the horizon looks like it's at eye level, because it very nearly is. Skiba even said that math doesn't lie. And he's right. Unless, of course, you leave out a critical part of the math, like he did. Okay, so what if I go higher, you might ask. Surely the horizon will drop below my eye level. Well, yes, but due to the geometry of a sphere, Something happens that flat earthers just don't consider. The higher up you go, the farther away the horizon gets. So the angle does not increase as fast as your elevation increases. This is another important factor Skiba completely left out. As the adjacent side gets a little bigger, the hypotenuse gets a lot bigger, and therefore the dip angle stays very low. Again, it is difficult to illustrate this and give you an idea of the true scale. Angles simply don't scale. The Earth is just way too big, and we are way too small to do it justice in an illustration. 
but if you draw it like this, you can at least get the correct idea. Skiba had no interest in even trying to make the angle look realistic. He seemed to greatly exaggerate it on purpose, and never tried to quantify the size of the angle in any way. This is a blatant error of omission that invalidates his whole argument. So now, Skiba shows a clip from my video, Proving the Earth is Not Flat, Part 1, and tries to prove me wrong. This is the critical part, the now infamous orange analogy. To picture what I mean, look at this orange. If I take a thin slice of it, I get a round disc. The edges of it, where the knife cut through, is a flat circle. That is what you see when you look at the horizon, the edges of a circle. The edges don't curve side to side, they run straight across our view. And since we are always in the center of the circle, they don't curve down. My first question is, why is this dude wearing fingernail polish? But, you know, I guess everybody's entitled to their thing. Um, but my other observation was, after he said, I, if I take an orange and slice it off, um, sorry, you can't do that. <laughs> If if your orange is representing the Earth, you've got to leave its spherical nature intact. You can't slice off the top of the sphere that you're using as your example and then say, that's why everything's flat, because I just sliced off the curve. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What? No, that is not my argument at all. Skee-Ball completely misconstrues my point. Many reasonable people understood what I was saying, but flat earthers seem to have a problem with comprehending analogies. Every day I get dumb comments like, uh, so who cut the earth? I repeatedly said, the edges of the slice represent the horizon line. I never said the surface of the earth is flat like the cut off orange. Anyway, let's go back to uh, Captain Fingernail Polish and uh, see what other piece of amazing logic he has for us. When you can see the horizon in all directions, it is the same distance away in all directions. So when you spin around, it looks exactly like a straight line and comes back around to join itself. Think about that. If it were curved down, it would not come back around and join itself at the same level. Exactly. <laughs> if it were curved, it would be dropping off 8 inches per mile squared from every point upon which you are standing. That is inescapable ball earth math. <laughs> wow. Did you see what he did there? I am talking about the flatness of the horizon, and he is talking about the curvature of the surface. These are two different concepts he doesn't seem to be able to separate. Yes, the surface does curve down away from you, very gradually, but the horizon does not look curved from our vantage point. I was simply trying to demonstrate that the cross-section of a sphere is always a flat circle, and the horizon we see is equivalent to the edges of a cross-section of a sphere. This is basic geometry. I tried to make it simple, but somehow I apparently just added confusion to the already confused. Perhaps I could have explained it better, but the only point I was trying to make is the shape of the cut is the shape of the horizon. And the shape of the cut-off part of the orange is the shape of the part of the Earth we can see from our vantage point on the surface, or even high above the surface. We simply cannot see the Earth like we see a beach ball unless we are far out in space. We can only see a small part of it, and that part is very slightly curved on the surface in all directions with a flat, circular edge. This is just a fact of geometry. The blue circle on Skeevy's beach ball is another good example of the shape we see. But remember, we always view this shape from the center, so the horizon forms a circular line around us, beyond which we cannot see any more of the surface. Scooby actually seems to understand this momentarily. To be fair, I do understand what Captain Fingernail Polish is uh, saying here. This is a typical argument that I've heard lots of times, actually. Ball earthers will claim that just like the blue circle at the top of the beach ball here, that's the visible horizon. So from whatever point you're standing on, and you're looking out toward the horizon, in 360 degrees, that line is going to be the same. It's, it's always going to be right there. But just a few minutes later, he contradicts himself and shows the horizon looking like this. 
No, it should not look like that. We live on a sphere, not a cylinder. People who think ships are disappearing over the curve in less than 10 miles distance, it's got to work both ways. I mean, if we're on a ball, then when the ship is going away from you on the, let's say, the Z-axis, going you know, f from you to a point away from you, and it's rolling over the ball in less than 10 miles, then you should have the exact same effect looking left to right on the x-axis. You should be seeing ships rolling up to the top of the ball and rolling down on the lateral x-axis. You know, I mean, if it's a ball, it's got to be, they got to be rolling both ways, away from you and side to side. We never see that, though. You can go to the beach and do a panoramic shot and put a parallel line over it and from end to end, and this is a lot more than just five miles, there's no perceived curvature here. None. Flat as a pancake. In fact, these are some pictures I took uh, on the beach at Malibu, California. And I, I went from there way up into the mountains above Pepperdine University and looked out. And I mean, easily, there's got to be probably close to 100 miles left to right. The, the distance on the horizon there, it's got to be, you know, quite a bit there. Put a parallel line over it, flat. So... You can't have it both ways. You can't say ships are rolling over the ball on the z-axis without having the same exact perception on the x-axis. Okay, so here, Skillsaw is confused between the path of a boat and the horizon. Yes, ships going in any direction are following the curve of the Earth. But the question is, how will we see that? When they go over the horizon, it is easy to see, as the bottom of the boat will become hidden by the horizon. What he shows is what people have seen for as long as there have been ships. But how exactly do you expect to see the curve of a boat's path as it is traveling laterally across your view? Remember, the horizon forms a circle around the viewer, and boats tend to travel in straight lines, not in circles. And most certainly, we don't expect a boat to follow a circular path that directly matches our horizon. So a boat traveling laterally across our view will either be in front of the horizon behind the horizon, or a combination of both. If it is in front of the horizon, it will look something like this. The horizon, again, is flat, but the surface is not. I illustrated the curve of the surface with these grid lines, but it is greatly exaggerated. The boat will curve around the surface, but again, the amount is very small, and it is going to be very difficult to detect. I filmed this boat crossing my view. At this distance, the boat only traveled at about half a mile within the camera's field of view. I calculated this based on the length of the boat. It is this 70-foot whale-watching boat. The curve of the Earth over this distance, one half mile, that is, the bulge height, is only one half inch. That's right. Remember to use the correct calculation for the correct situation. We are now concerned with the bulge height between points on the surface not the drop from the horizontal. So don't be tempted to use the 8 inches per mile square calculation. That is the wrong calc to use in this case, and it overstates the amount of the curve seen from this perspective. So, do you actually think you could see a curve of one half inch up and one half inch down from this distance? No, of course not. And if the boat is farther away, the boat's path is longer, but the distance is greater, so the bulge gets bigger but it is still too small and too far away to see or measure. And also, if the boat is traveling in a straight line across your view, then it is closer in the middle and farther at the ends, which also will make detecting the curve difficult. A boat crossing a body of water laterally across your view does curve with the surface, but is just too slight to easily see. You can much more easily see it as it travels away from you because it goes over the horizon. Those little triangles draw in apparently represent boats, but all he is effectively showing here is that the horizon is flat. Of course the horizon is flat, but the surface isn't. When you see it more correctly, like this, you see the boat will curve, but by a tiny amount. Skivvy said this view is close to 100 miles across, but in this picture it is considerably less than that. 
I live not far from there, and I am familiar with this view. This is Catalina Island, and this is Santa Barbara Island, which is 25 miles from the tip of Catalina. So, based on that, this view is about 45 miles across. The bulge height for that distance is 337 feet. That may seem like a lot, but remember, we are looking at a view 45 miles across. 45 miles is 237,600 feet. So a bulge of 337 feet is very tiny in comparison. Since this picture is displayed at 800 pixels wide, each pixel is 297 feet. And so, the 337 foot bulge height would only be barely more than one pixel high. The thickness of the white measuring line is three pixels, so a boat traveling across that view will only curve up and down about one-third of the height of that line. You simply are not going to be able to see that. Once again, Skiba shows how ignoring the huge scale of the Earth and failing to quantify how much the surface curves leads him to a false conclusion. His expectations about what we should see are all wrong. Thanks for watching. Be sure to see my other series, Proving the Earth is Not Flat, in which I explain all the evidence you can see for yourself that proves the spherical shape of the Earth. And also, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.